Welcome back to the homestead, everybody. Today we are in our raised bed garden because it's that time of year again. The cabbage worms are coming out, the moths are coming out, all of the pests are about to do what they do best. They're about to destroy our cabbages, our broccoli, and all of that good stuff. So we're gonna show you a quick tip on how we get rid of cabbage worms, moths, aphids, and other pests that destroy your garden. guys so I've been inspecting our plants and I have gathered some friends here this is a cabbage worm so if you look down here guys this is the damage that these little guys do so the moth will lay her eggs or larva on the leaves and when they hatch they get to town check out over here these are our broccoli they love broccoli leaves yeah so we have broccoli we have some cabbages here in the center we have Napa cabbage that just absolutely exploded in this bed uh, we have some Swiss chard. They don't really, uh, they don't really do anything with the chard. And then we have some collards over here, and they do munch on this. So basically, Brussels all the sprouts. brassicas. So the damage that you see to our leaves right now, this is pretty much minor. But if we don't get ahead of this, it will get major to the point we won't even have a harvest. All right, guys, we're going to show you just how easy it is to get ahead of the game with your pest out here. It takes just a couple minutes to make this mixture. The particular insecticide that we're making, it's mostly um, completely organic. It's safe for you. It's safe for your kids. This works great for aphids, uh, cabbage worms, thrips, white flies, and a variety of other pests as well. So what you need. 32 ounces of hot water. We just used it straight from the tap. 32 ounces, the same thing as a quart, if you wanna use a quart jar. We use Dr. Bronner's soap. We go with the peppermint Dr. Bronner's soap because peppermint is also a pest repellent. We also add cayenne pepper. And so the ratios are 32 ounces hot water, one teaspoon of peppermint Dr. Bronner's soap. If you don't have peppermint, that's okay. It's just what we prefer and then a half a teaspoon of cayenne pepper. This is also a pest repellent, so this stuff works great. All right, so what I'm gonna do first, I'm gonna go ahead and put a tablespoon of the peppermint Dr. Bronner soap in here. I like to mix it before putting it into your sprayer. In the past, I've had issues where it doesn't mix very well in the sprayer and then it clogs. And so you wanna make sure you find a sprayer that this can actually pass through. So first, shake this up really well. If you do use a quart size jar, make sure you leave about an inch at the top so you have head space for shaking. All right, next, I'm gonna add half a teaspoon of cayenne pepper. This is some potent stuff. So the way the soap works with the insects, it actually will coat the outer shell of their body if, they're, if the larva or the insects are on the leaves and it'll break down their outer coat and quite rapidly dehydrate them. As far as the cayenne pepper and the peppermint goes, it's also a great repellent for pests. All right, so I think we are mixed quite well, about as dissolved as it's gonna get. All right, now that our mix is done, we're gonna pour it into our spray bottle. We love this spray bottle. We've used more of the traditional ones that you can get at pretty much any store you can imagine. Walmart and all that stuff. Um, those, for whatever reason, have trouble with the mixture passing through and oftentimes they clog. We found this on Amazon. We love it. The mixture, the mixture passes through quite well. We'll have a link for that in the description below. So we just pour it in. Give it another shake. All right, and the way these work, you can adjust the flow, give it some pumps. You'll feel the pressure build when it's ready. I love the adjustments on here. You can get a nice stream all the way to a nice mist. 
The way we apply, we apply onto the back sides of our leaves. Um, it helps it to stay on there even in a rain and even in watering your plants, less chance of it coming off. And oftentimes when the cabbage moths are laying their eggs, it's always on the back side of the leaf as well as the aphids. They're always on the underside of the leaf is what we have found. And so I'm gonna spray the undersides of these leaves. It's super easy. We, because our infestation isn't bad, we're gonna just start with once a week. If you have a really bad infestation, you can do this up to you know two, three, even four times a week. Um, any more than that, and you're probably gonna cause some damage to your plants. And so also make sure you have these ratios down. Don't think, oh, I have a huge infestation. I'm gonna use a tablespoon of the soap. You can burn your leaves. So do not go more than a teaspoon per, per quart. These are our Brussels sprouts right here. They're not getting hit too bad, but I'm gonna do them anyway. Another thing, if you don't have pests, you just wanna be preemptive, this, this works great as well. So not this growing season, but the past grow, growing season, our potato plants got hit terribly with aphids and ants. What we didn't realize is aphids and ants, they have a symbiotic relationship. The ants will actually defend the aphids, they will place them up on the leaves, and the ants eat the secretions that the aphids release as they're chewing on the leaves. And so we found that if we got rid of our ants, we got rid of our aphid problems. So you could actually do that in tandem. We created a borax sugar paste that we would hide in our beds close to the ants, or to the ant hills. The ants would go get the borax sugar mix, take it back to their colony, feed it to their family, feed it to the queen, eventually killing the whole colony. It worked amazing. Our potatoes completely came back last year. If you haven't seen that video or you wanna watch it, it's in the description below. Something else we learned this past year and we're really going after is the health of our soil. The healthier your soil, um, the population of pests goes down dramatically. These two beds, at the end of last year's growing season, we heavily amended them with chicken manure from our chickens. And so we planted this year, last year our potatoes, like I said, they did poorly. We got a small harvest after we defeated the aphid issue. This year we have no issues. We don't have a single aphid. And the only difference is the health of our soil. We're on a journey. We're gonna be producing a lot more content on how to build up the health of your soil, which I believe if the healthier the soil, the healthier the plant, um, the way less chances you have of a pest infestation. All right guys, that's it. Super safe, super easy, and super effective. We used this last year with amazing results. If you haven't checked us out on Instagram yet, go ahead over there and we will leave a link in the description below. You can check us out. We will give updates on how this is working for us as well as some other pesticide solutions for your organic garden. And also we talked about soil health. We're gonna be having some videos coming up real soon on worm bins and creating worm castings and all of that good stuff. So stay tuned for those videos. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button, hit the notification bell next to it, and hit all and you'll receive all our notifications when we release videos in the future. Thank you guys so much for watching and we will see you in the next video.